before going into that let's again revise recurrent laryngeal nerve is supplying all intrinsic muscle except cricothyroid and cricothyroid is responsible for the adduction right this is responsible for the adduction okay so cricothyroid is responsible for the adduction and for abduction abduction your for posterior cricothyroid muscle the posterior uh cricoarytenoid muscle the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle is responsible for abduction and this is supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve so abduction which is done by only one muscle that is posterior cricoarytenoid muscle this is supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve so if recurrent laryngeal nerve of both the side right and left would get damaged then the abduction that is moving of the vocal cord away from the midline will get affected so what will be the problem the problem would be in the in in passing of the airway in the breathing of the patient right okay if your vocal cord cannot approximate adduction cannot happen right then the voice production would get affected because we breathe by in through closed vocal cord uh, sorry we uh, we phonate by a closed vocal cord and we breathe by a open vocal cord so for breathing the vocal cord has to be open and for phonation the vocal cord has to be closed right so voice production is happening because of the closed vocal cord and breathing is because of the open vocal cord okay so just we will revise it again 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 so let us see the functions of larynx then we will move further on position of the vocal cords so function of larynx the main function of larynx number 1 it's called voice box right so for voice production so it is responsible for voice production right so voice production second function it protects the lower airway from aspiration so protects protects airway from aspiration okay and third is it is the conduit for air to pass to the respiratory tract to lower respiratory tract so conduit conduit for air for air to pass for breathing for breathing to happen so these are the three important function of larynx okay and guys again the vocal cords if it is closed then the voice production will happen if it is open then only the air will pass through it okay so keep it in mind okay now guys let us see some very important fact about the position of the vocal cords so we have a bilateral vocal cord right and there are few important position of the vocal cord that we have to understand let's imagine that all the nerve of the vocal cord is damaged i mean it is uh, not innervating it is cut so superior laryngeal nerve is cut the recurrent laryngeal nerve is cut everything is cut so if everything is cut the vocal cord is not getting in any innervation then where would the vocal cord rest that's called the cadaveric position cadaveric position of the vocal cord so this is the cadaveric position or we call it intermediate position so red which i am making the red line this is called the cadaveric position so c is for cadaveric position cadaveric position or we call it the intermediate position or intermediate position and thank god even if all the nerve of the vocal cord is cut there would be the opening in the vocal cord for the air to pass right because it is not in the midline it is lying it is in this intermediate position right this intermediate position or this is called cadaveric position okay now from the cadaveric position towards the midline right towards little towards the midline this is called paramedian position paramedian position right so this is called paramedian position and more towards midline this is called median position median position so this is we are moving towards the midline and when from the cadaveric position we are moving away from the midline then we have this slight abduction position little away from the from the cadaveric position this is called slight abdu abduction slight 
abduction and this is called full abduction quite away this is called full abduction full abduction so the positions are defined by the distance from the midline right it is defined for the distance from the midline so if i write here from the distance from the midline so let's say if it is 0 mm from the midline we call it the median the median position right if it is let's say 1.5 mm 1.5 mm away from median then we call it para median position para median position if it is 3.5 mm from the median then it's called the cadaveric or the intermediate position so 3.4 mm this is the cadaveric this is cadaveric position right or intermediate we call it intermediate okay then 7 mm 7 mm from the midline this is called the slight abduction slight abduction right and 9.5 mm this is called full abduction full abduction okay so as i said again that we breathe by a open vocal cord and we phonate we produce the sound by a closed vocal cord so when the vocal cord is in median position this is the position for phonation for the voice production when it is in paramedian this is for whisper right and when it is in intermediate position this is called cadaveric position okay slight abduction slight abduction this is for quiet breathing quiet normal breathing and for deep inspiration we need a full abduction deep inspiration right deep inspiration so again i am saying if this is the position of vocal cord if both the vocal cords are at full abduction this is at full abduction this is for deep inspiration if both the vocal cords are at slight abduction then this is for the quiet respiration both the vocal cord is in the median position it is in the median position right then phonation will happen right so these different position would uh, make us phonate and help us in breathing okay okay now let us talk that if the unilateral vocal cord paralysis happen now remember vocal cord paralysis when you see this word think that what is being asked is the recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis right it is what do we mean by recurrent vocal cord paralysis is kind of synonymous to the recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis okay so vocal cord paralysis means recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis okay so let's say that recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis right nerve paralysis now we have talked that recurrent laryngeal nerve innervates all the muscles except cricothyroid so if unilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy happens then if one side of the vocal cord if see this is the vocal cord this is let's say the epiglottis okay this is the epiglottis and this is the this is the lower part of the vocal cord now let's say if the right side vocal cord this is the left side and this is the right side if the right side vocal cord gets the recurrent laryngeal nerve gets paralyzed so the right vocal cord would lie in the midline because abduction will not happen so the it would be the word left would be totally for the left vocal cord left vocal cord to do all the function so left vocal cord will move it is normal so it will move it will try to uh, overcome try to overcome this space which we need to close for phonation to happen by it will try to compensate compensate for the lack of movement of the right vocal cord right so this left vocal cord the movement of the left vocal cord will only be there so let's say that in recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy okay what will happen there would be 
no problem in the respiration because there would be enough space present for the air to pass right so there would be no difficulty no difficulty in in breathing right but the problem would be that the voice production would get affected so if the vocal cord is not getting closed abduction is not have i mean vocal cord is not getting entirely closed then weak voice would be there so what will happen weak voice weak voice so there would be a weak voice weak voice in the patient right if compensation is not happening by the other side of the vocal cord so again i am repeating just to overcome the confusion what i am trying to say that in unilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy the side the recurrent laryngeal nerve is paralyzed is not innervating the the vocal cord right the muscles of the vocal cord recurrent laryngeal nerve innervates all the muscles except cricothyroid and the adductor abductor muscle which is responsible for the movement of the vocal cord away from midline gets paralyzed so the side which is getting affected the vocal cord will lie towards the midline it will lie towards the slightly towards the midline or paramedian or midline right median or paramedian and the other side vocal cord which is normal will maintain its normal movement right so because of the movement of the other side of the vocal cord the space is enough for the air to pass so there will be no respiratory distress in the patient right it would be enough space for the air to breathing to happen but if the both the vocal cord is not able to approximate properly the patient will have a, a weak voice right so here what would be the clinical feature of unilateral vocal cord paralysis there would be a weak weak voice of the patient the voice of the patient would become little affected weak voice but no effect on respiration no effect on respiration right so there will be no effect on respiration now what about if the bilateral vocal cord paralysis has happened so bilateral vocal cord paralysis means both side recurrent laryngeal nerve has been paralyzed so if this is the epiglottis this is the the lower uh the uh, your arytenoid and other parts okay now this is the vocal cord right this is the vocal cord okay this is the normal opening of the vocal cord in case of bilateral vocal cord paralysis both the vocal cord will sit in the midline will sit on the mid, in the midline so what will happen there would be no space for the air to pass so patient will have respiratory distress immediate respiratory distress voice production will not get affected so remember in case of bilateral vocal cord paralysis what would be the clinical feature the first clinical feature would be your uh, your respiratory distress or strider respiratory distress or strider and immediately right you will have to do the tracheostomy in the patient right so the management immediate management in this case this is an emergency would be your tracheostomy so number of time during the thyroidectomy the the complete thyroidectomy the bilateral vocal cord paralysis can happen because of the bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy in that case the patient will have the both the vocal cords lying in the midline so there would be respiratory distress or strider and immediately the management has to be done we have to do tracheostomy okay if unilateral vocal cord is paralyzed one side of the vocal cord is paralyzed because unilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy has happened in that case patient will have weak voice patient there will be no effect on aspiration uh, respiration and there is a possibility that there would be a risk of aspiration because vocal cord is not closing so there would be a risk of aspiration if the other vocal cord is not approximating right compensating for the work of the vocal cord which is paralyzed so risk of aspiration right so again just i am in a, uh, again i am uh, summarizing what i have just now taught that vocal cord palsy vocal cord palsy when this word we see mostly we have to think about the palsy of recurrent laryngeal nerve recurrent laryngeal nerve this can happen unilateral or bilateral in case of unilateral 
recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy right in case of recur unilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy you know unilateral recurrent nerve palsy is more common and left side is more common than right side in the ratio 4 is to 1 okay so in this case what would be the clinical feature the clinical feature would be that that a uh, patient will have patient will have your your voice production would be less the voice production would be weak so voice production weak right voice production will be very weak and second risk of aspiration risk of aspiration right risk of aspiration will be there in case of bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy okay what would be the clinical feature the clinical feature would be the respiratory distress respiratory distress or strider immediate strider okay so remember in case of bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy the immediate management is we have to do tracheostomy tracheostomy in the patient okay so this is how we manage the recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy unilateral bilateral okay now let us talk about the superior laryngeal nerve palsy the superior laryngeal nerve what does it innervate the superior laryngeal nerve innervates the cricothyroid uh, muscle and which is the tensor muscle tensor muscle or adductor muscle which is responsible for the proper quality of the voice so in superior laryngeal nerve injury the respiratory distress will never happen because abduction will always be there but the quality of the voice will get affected because the tensor which controls the quality of the voice and which approximates the addu uh, the adductor function of the cricothyroid muscle would get affected so remember that in case of <coughs> in case of superior laryngeal nerve palsy the clinical features which we will get is the voice production will get affected the voice production will get affected there would be change in the voice of the patient change in the voice in the voice of the patient right there would be change in the voice of the patient but breathing will not get affected but breathing is not affected breathing not affected again and again i am repeating we breathe through an open vocal cord and we phonate through a closed vocal cord here the vocal cord closer is getting affected because of the effect on the cricothyroid muscle which is only innervated by the superior laryngeal nerve so whatever changes will happen in the voice breathing will not get affected a number of times superior laryngeal nerve palsy after thyroid surgeries are detected very late because very late right so it's it's not some immediate complication we see the life threatening immediate complication is what we see is bilateral vocal cord paralysis which 